Commenting on this policy flip-flop, Ambit's Ashok Vadhwa, one of India's top dealmakers, told me earlier this week that the market would rather have no policy at all rather than such an inconsistent policy. The important thing is that the FDI regime needs a clearer description of policy, needs a more transparent description of policy, and whatever it is, let our policymakers understand that we need clarity from a sustainable point of view. We can't have changes, you know, defining something today and then changing the definition tomorrow. So whatever it is, good, bad or ugly, let's make it transparent and let's make it, make, make it, let's make it consistent for a period of time. And should that happen, I do believe, I do believe that there is more than adequate strategic investment interest in India from, from variety of quarters. The Japanese companies continue to be very uh, interested in investing in India. I would say the U.S. companies are flush with money and want to invest in India. And should the policy making become a little more consistent, I think in the medium to long term, a lot more dollars can flow into India on a, on a sustained basis because this will be long term strategic and FDI investment, which hopefully will, will more than cover up for the sentiment that we see with withdrawals that, that, that are happening from the FII community. But clearly that clarity hasn't really happened. As you rightly said, Ashok, let's take the case of retail. It was that big bang reform Till, even as of the time we are speaking, the government is talking to several global retailers to explain, really. I mean, it's, it's really surprising that months later, you're still trying to explain the finer points and trying to put the uh, dots on the eye, etc. Let's take the case of aviation. Uh, we go through that sector open, market cheers it, and we're still figuring out what is the definition of control, etc., is that some, th then therefore are we talking about too much of announcements and very little on the ground really because if this is the way we go, you're not going to get those billions of dollars, isn't it? Actually, quite the contrary. I mean, not only are you not going to get those billions of dollars, but you are re-emphasizing the world belief that most strategic investors have that Indian policy making is guided by the local political sentiment versus rational economic sentiment. And, and, you know, you, you made two very good points. Retail is one very good example. Aviation is the other example. And I would argue pharmaceuticals is the third example. All sectors where there are large dollars that can flow into India, provided there is clarity and consistency in policy making. I mean, let's face it. You are now saying in your, in your retail policy, in the FDI for multi-brand retail, you're now saying that each state government will decide. We do know that there are multiple state elections around the corner. You may have a Congress government today that has supported the retail reform in multi-brand in the particular state. And three months down the road, there may be a BJP government out there who may say, listen, I'm going to now retract from everything that has been agreed. We have seen retraction in the past. We have seen changes in policy making in the past. And, and, and so long as these inconsistencies continue to prevail and, and lack of clarity seems to be the way forward, uh, the continuous belief will be that India is great envisioning in India is great in policy announcements, but it is extremely poor in implementation and in being able to get reforms agreed and implemented across various political and state jurisdictions. So, so you know, all these policy makings are actually hurting us because of lack of clarity. I'd rather not, I, I'd rather be in a regime where there is no policy making than a regime where there is policy making only to be withdrawn. I mean, the Jet Etihad case is, is a great example, isn't it? We all thought that aviation had finally opened up. Uh, we, we saw an interested strategic investing in India, and now we are all holding our breath to see what more changes need to be made before they are eventually allowed to invest in India. Scathing comments coming in there. More coming in from former RBI Governor Bimal Jalan, who too is worried about the frequency with which the government is tinkering with FDI policy. He told Harsha last month that these aren't things which can change, quote-unquote, every afternoon. I would worry much more about our FDI, FII policy. Clarity and stability is of essence, and we should not uh, fiddle with it every afternoon, as it were. Could, could you elaborate on the, on the clarity that you would require on FDI and FII, sir? I'm asking you in this context of, we have seen policy flip-flops happen quite a bit. Uh, what, what, are, what are those concerns that you have at this point? No, no, the most important, you know, there are certain, what you might say, certain norms. I mean, in any profession, in any policy making, there are certain norms that you have to abide by. I mean, transparency, 
non retrospective amendments unless there is a crisis of some kind unless there is a uh, you know i mean there is a security crisis or something else you can go non you know make uh, uh, sort of prospective or rather retrospective amendments but there are certain norms and the norms are that you should have stability mm. unless there is a huge problem which is emerges sure. you can't just leave it to discretion as it were mm. that today it is 51 tomorrow it is 55 yes today it is 26 then in one industry it is something in another industry it's something else then we have rules about you know i mean that you can have a subsidiary which does something which you can have something else. so i think we just need a clean brush and have a straight forward fdi policy in particular sure i mean i am much more in favor i mean this is a per, per, personal view sure. of the fdi investment yeah. in investment in investment you know so Uh, I don't know whether I'm making myself clear, but I say whatever policy you have, mm. keep it steady, mm. keep it stable, mm. and do it without too much complications. Petroleum Minister Virappa Moyli has been the one voice within the government that has come out strongly on the cross currents that tend to engulf any significant decision that has to be taken. Speaking to me a few weeks ago, Moyli spoke of being frustrated at the way progress was being stymied on crucial decisions. i find negative atmosphere environment everywhere no decision could be taken forward and you know we need to explore you know many of these things but you know the the atmosphere is not except the prime minister you know who wants that this should happen and i am very happy i am inspired because there is his support and that's what he is reminding let us decide let the proposal come and when that is so you know the working out the proposal you know many a time you know cabinet papers are secret isn't it and i find and before that those papers come to me it is already you know in the market already in the market you know this this can happen only in india otherwise you know the you can be tried for fashion i am telling you the letting out the cabinet secrets that means to say somebody wants to debate and resist it and stop it they don't want even these things to go to the cabinet forget about taking the cabinet and cabinet taking a decision rightly so it has to happen but you know you want to send the cabinet you find that much of a difficulty the swimming against the current